Alrighty, guys, welcome back. Earlier, we were uh, talking about, you know, we have our little Tuesday keeping the faith feel good story segment, and I thought I'd be nice and give you a daily dose of it, um, <laughs> a double dose. So we got another one for you guys today. Um, this one is also really, really sweet. It's so cute. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I had so much fun finding these. <laughs> wow. Okay. See, I'm over here. I want the I want the Joe Dirt drinking natty light. <laughs> I mean, those are great too, you know, but it's nice it's nice seeing... as this meth lab burns down. You know, that's what I'm looking for. <laughs> it's nice to see humans being being good humans you know it's nice i love it yes okay all righty so a rhode island rhode island college students gift a security guard uh, a trip home to nigeria um james works as an overnight security guard for a residential building at rhode island's providence college a beloved mentor to students james mentioned that he had not seen his family in nigeria in more than a decade students worked together to start a gofundme to send james to Niger nigeria and it went viral um so several students at providence college in providence rhode island recently came together to give their uh, building security guard the gift of a lifetime um, it's just incredible to see how fast God works, especially in our community. Brandon uh, Reichert said, um, they, we never thought that number would be possible. Reichert, a PC freshman, told uh, Next Star's WPRI 12 News he moved to create a GoFundMe page for the residential overnight security guard, James, who had told him that he hadn't visited his family in Nigeria in more than a decade. The money raised was put toward sending James, who was also known as Ankh, uh, short for uncle, that's what students called him, um, mm -hmm. on a trip home, according to Reichert. He said James had become a mentor and close friend throughout his time at PC. Uh, sophomore Daniel Singh said everyone loves James. He's just someone you're drawn towards, Singh said. He's kind and compassionate. After a Friday night out, you would come back and James is there and he's not tired. He's not sleeping. He's up and awake and ready to talk to you. When Reicher gifted James a $3,000 gifted the three thousand dollars he raised for him the security guard fell to his knees he uh james said this was unexpected i don't know how much i can thank you guys i pray from the bottom of my heart and will continue to protect you guys the donations haven't stopped since james received the money for his trip efforts to help james visit his family are picking up steam and the gofundme page so far has raised more than seven thousand dollars you have parents cousins relatives and other people donating that wouldn't even know who James is, Singh said. It really speaks to how moving he is and how moving the community can be. So nice. Okay. So oh, James Unk, Unk over here. That's the, that's kind of like the new thing. Like Unk. Uh, that's Unk. like Shannon Sharp, they call him. They they call him Unk. I saw a thing, Colin Cowherd. This is Uncle Colin. I'm like, Uncle Colin, you ain't my <laughs> uncle. <laughs> you know, that's just the new thing. I'm calling people uncles for some mm -hmm. reason. Um, it's a nice story because you can tell it seems like the people care about them and like mm -hmm. them. Yeah. Um, sometimes people get caught up with, you know, you're not from America. Mm-hmm. And it's way more noticeable in the U.S. When you're here, you walk down the street and, you know, it's, I'm not the black guy. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm the American. Mm -hmm. She's she's the British, British mm -hmm. woman. That's the guy from Nigeria or Mozambique or this person's from Portugal. Mm -hmm. You're from a part of, you're, you know, you're part of this whole melting pot of cultures and mm -hmm. and things here and it, it's such a beautiful thing that's one of the things i love so much about being here mm -hmm. i'm just, you know i'm just the american guy mm -hmm. and so i love hearing this story how everyone kind of uh got behind this guy and is trying to help him go home mm -hmm. it's hard for people who come to you know they come to the u.s for a, a, a better life, mm -hmm. but oh, yeah. opportunity. Yeah. sometimes, yes, they're able to get a better life, 
But as you know, and I know, it's hard to survive in the U.S. Yes, and it you, is. You know, it's you got to <laughs> you got to work. You got to work hard and you got to get lucky. You could be a hard working guy mm -hmm. and have nothing. Yeah. And like this guy here, he's doing his job and everyone loves him and everyone supports him. But he hasn't been able to go back home to his family in a decade mm -hmm. and needing help from strangers, really, you know, yes, they know him from, they know him as he does his job, mm -hmm. but you know, a lot of times, a lot of immigrants don't have family here. Mm -hmm. And so having a story where people are coming together to help him go home to see his family and spend time with his family, and then come back. I I just absolutely love this kind of mm -hmm. a story. Yeah. Because I see so many people from all over the world that comes in. And especially when I see people in the US, it's hard. It's hard to come to mm -hmm. the US and you know, have enough money to pay your bills and have to go back. Think about it. Even someone like yourself, people struggle to pay rent, utilities, and everything else. Let alone, hey, I want to, I want to be able to get a flight and get my passport and get everything set up so I can go go to Nigeria for a month. Yeah, the, you know, most people don't get, you know, the vacation time. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no. So helping him, because when you haven't been home, most people don't grab that, grasp this concept. When you haven't been home in a decade, mm -hmm. coming back for, hey, I only got a one week vacation, so I'm going to fly in yeah. and then fly back. That's a two day flight there and a two day flight back. And then you got, what, three days that you're really there to see your family? That's mm -hmm. not enough time. No. So not only does he need money for the flight, which is comes out to about three thousand dollars. Yeah, crazy amount of money. He's the money he's gonna need to be there for a little bit of time, plus the money so that he has a when he comes back, does he have a place to stay? Because all and his the money, money. Yeah, right. like if he's living somewhere like where he's paying rent or owns or whatever in the, the states he's got to keep up with those bills while he's in while Nigeria. he's there yeah yeah it's it's a, you know that's the reason why some people will work a second job because to travel mm -hmm. because their first job barely covers the bills for themselves yeah to survive and then hey i want to go i want to go on a trip i a friend of mine she uh, she just got her passport mm -hmm. and she's been working a second job for two years mm -hmm. just gearing up so she have enough money to go on a trip. Mm -hmm. Don't you think that that's that's kind of sad to me? Yeah. That, you know, so this poor guy, he's not planning on a, this luxury vacation. He just wants to go home to his to his, you know, back to his country, mm -hmm. see his friends and his family. You know, I don't, I don't speculate mom, dad, aunt, uncles and all that, but he wants to see his family. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a hard one there. Yeah. Yeah. This one, this one touched me because, um, so where I live, I have, my apartment has a shuttle that goes from the apartment complex to campus and then back back into um and there's this one guy his name's rocky he's uh, he's our shuttle what driver. up rocky <laughs> <laughs> he's our shuttle driver and he is so great he's so nice you know sometimes i'll sit up front with him and i'll chat on the on the drive there and on the drive back um and i guess you don't really realize that uh those people like touch your lives like that and oh, i guess I guess you don't realize that you touch their lives like that as well, you know, because you're not just viewing them as someone that's, you know, 
working a job. They're just there to, you know, be a security guard or they're just there to drive the shuttle, you know, and so you don't really, like, think about, like, talking to them or anything. But, like, once you, like, sit down and have a conversation, they're, they're more than likely some of the nicest people you will ever meet like um I actually I didn't go but Rocky invited me to his wedding that he had in February oh nice <laughs> and like he invited a lot of the um like a lot of the other college students who ride the shuttle he invited a bunch of like the college students to his wedding because you know we all love Rocky so much <laughs> see I would have went I'm a big believer first off because I totally get what you're coming from a lot of times I always try to remember those people. Sometimes you only think about the people close to you. Mm -hmm. And so that's one of the reasons why back when I used to be in the US, I used to do the big Halloween so mm -hmm. that all the kids got like the big giant candy bar and the big, the big experience because it touches mm -hmm. people's lives. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I always believed in that one. Um, I'm always the guy, like you see someone and they're trying to figure out, you know, they're paying, they're, you see they're buying groceries and they're a little short. If I see someone short, a lot of times, especially if it's a mom and I have it, I'll try to help. Mm -hmm. And I've done that in the past as well, because I just feel like that stuff comes back to you. Mm -hmm. And if you help someone, maybe someone will help you. Yeah. So that's what that's that's the thing I like about this best is that people are helping each other. Mm -hmm. You know, there's too many stories about people getting torn down. This is an yeah. uplifting story where mm -hmm. people are helping him go back to Nigeria. And I hope people realize that not only it, while he's there, he's not working and security guards don't get paid much money. So hopefully there's enough money that he can mm -hmm. pay his rent utilities and everything while he goes home to see the family and comes back yeah uh haven't been to nigeria haven't been to africa planning on going to morocco it's crazy that i haven't been to africa yet where i'm i literally just five hours away from africa mm -hmm. so planning on hitting hitting morocco this summer so i'll be hitting i'll be heading africa soon nice Come along, Faith, come <laughs> along. <laughs> I don't so. have that kind of money, Tate. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is hilarious. No. I got one vacation this year. <laughs> did you are you going anywhere? Are you, aren't you going no, you didn't go anywhere for spring break. Where where no, where did I, you go? I no for spring break. I just I just stayed here. My spring break was more of like a a relaxing reset i had slept a lot and i was lazy i loved it uh no but in uh in the summer i'm going on a cruise with my big family <laughs> my oh, family what's, what's considered huge. a big family um so my mom my dad are going uh my brother his wife their two kids uh my sister her two kids uh, my grandma and my other grandma, uh, and I have an aunt and an uncle coming, and then uh, me and my. What about, what about cousin? What about cousin Tate? You are more than welcome to come if you want to. <laughs> I hang out with the two grandmas. <laughs> so that's that's sixteen people, I believe, going on this cruise all together. So <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah. That's awesome. And now, that's, that's not even like all of my, yeah, I have a very big family. Very I have, I come from a huge family as well, but we wouldn't all go on a cruise together. Cruises. I like my, I like my family. That's a, that's <laughs> a, that's part. a big one. Yeah. Because a cruise, you're kind of confined. And where are you going anywhere kind of cool? Like where, um, where are you cruising to? We're going to uh, Cozumel, Mexico. And we are also going to uh, Mahogany Bay, which is in uh, Rotan, Honduras. So I'm very excited. We have never been to Honduras. We been have all over. Excursions for both of them. Um, You're going to go to a country I've never even never been to. I've been, Honduras. I've been to Honduras several times. I'm my what? family is my family is a we're big cruisers, and so I've been to Honduras. I think this is the third. This will be the third time me going to Honduras. You uh, you understand? I don't know anyone who's been to Honduras. That's <laughs> that one. That's a unique one. There. That is. That's. Well, Mahogany that's... Bay is 
really beautiful. It's uh, like basic Caribbean island. It's so pretty. Mm -hmm. The water is a light blue. I, I love South White America, sand. Central America. White sand beaches, great. I'm very, I'm so excited. I'm so Honduras, excited. so you got you got something on your resume I do not have, and I've hit South <laughs> America and Central America hard. But yeah. I've been to well because oh, I think this will be my fifth or sixth cruise, so I've been to a lot of places in the Caribbean area. So I've got a I got a long list of places that I've been to in that area. Your family are your family are Europe, cruisers. Though. I'm more yes. of the resort kind of guy. Mm -hmm. I like going to the resort and just, yeah. <laughs> All right. Yeah. All righty, guys. Well, with that, we are going to close out the show. Thank you guys for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Your support means a lot to us, so please remember to subscribe to the show and leave a positive review. It really does make a difference. We also invite you to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and Instagram for more content updates. Thank you once again. Have a wonderful day, and we will see you tomorrow. Peace. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great. I don't wanna go to work.